Have you ever heard about the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface? Maybe not, but I bet you have heard of a UEFI BIOS. Well, UEFI stands for Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. We're going to kick it off here and investigate the UEFI BIOS. I'll do the investigating and you'll get the tour. Let's begin. So, my computer here has just booted into the UEFI BIOS. Every computer is a little bit different. It may require different keystrokes in order to access the BIOS. For example, my computer required me to press the delete key after I first turned it on. So here we are. This is a real BIOS, not a simulated BIOS. In the top left corner, you can see my motherboard's model number, awesome, and my CPU temperature. Right below that, you can even see my motherboard temperature. In the middle here, we can actually see our system time and date. Right below that, we can see the current firmware of my UEFI BIOS. What I really enjoy though is in the top right corner of the screen where you see these listed items here in the top. Here you can view my current CPU, which has four CPU cores and six GPU cores. You can view the operating frequency for both my CPU and my RAM. You can also see the total size of the RAM that I have installed in my system. Now remember, this is the UEFI BIOS. What that means is I have a graphical user interface that includes keyboard and mouse support. This is very different from what we've seen with legacy BIOS. To further demonstrate this, look at this horizontal bar right below my system time and date and my CPU and RAM. From left to right, this is my boot order of my computer. What's even more awesome is the fact that I can drag and drop these items anywhere. We will focus on configuration of this though in another video. So let's take a quick look inside the UFI BIOS. Let's start by investigating the left side of the screen. Here we will find that we have an area for motherboard settings, overclocking our system for faster performance, and an area called mFlash, which allows us to flash our system with an updated UFI BIOS. Now on the right side of the screen, we have a section that where we can choose different overclocking profiles. We can pre-build these for the right gaming or video editing occasion. Down below that, we have a hardware monitor where we can check out the power usage and cooling. We can even have customized fan speeds and even view graphs here. And lastly, we can visit the Board Explorer. The Board Explorer is awesome because this allows us to have a beautiful and interactive view of what's actually attached to our motherboard. So it's time for the deeper look. So first, we'll head over to Settings. In Settings, we can look at System Settings, which I can either click on with a mouse or click the Enter key. And inside of here, we see time and date, as well as in text, what's connected to my motherboard and the firmware version. We next are going to have the advanced area. In the advanced area, we can do a lot of fine tuning and control of both the peripherals and the power settings of our motherboard. Another item we can customize is going to be the boot settings. So I'll head back out and go to boot. This is extremely important. This allows us to customize the boot order of our system, both using device preference and security settings known as secure boot. We can take a look at that later on. If we go into the security settings though, we can take a look here and see that we have the ability to set an administrator password. This will prevent other people from accessing and modifying our UFI bio settings. Now let's get out of the settings area and let's go all the way over and see overclock. We'll take a quick look at the overclock settings and you can see all the customizations possible here. This allows you to fine tune your machine for the performance that you desire. But this may cause some extra wear and tear in your system due to increased heat. Next, we will have the M flash section. This is where you can utilize tools in order to flash your UEFI BIOS with the latest firmware. This is commonly done with a USB key or flash drive plugged in. Not too much. Heading to the right side, we'll go over to our overclocking profiles. This is where we can pick what overclocking profile to use that we have pre-built and saved for a given situation. This would be good for gaming or video editing, or maybe even normal computing use. Last two sections. We'll take a trip into the hardware monitor. Here we can look at the CPU fan speed, temperature, as well as case fan speeds. Some UFI will even allow you to set an average temperature you'd like your system to stay at, and your cooling fans will react accordingly to do their best to keep your system as close to that target temperature as possible. 
Love it. We'll back up and take a look at that Board Explorer. If I click on the Board Explorer, this is great. In the Board Explorer, you can get a graphical view of your motherboard. The highlighted sections allow you to hover your mouse over them and read a description of what is connected to that component. For example, if I were to take my mouse cursor and I can hover over the RAM slots where my memory is, I can actually see information regarding it. You can see that each RAM slot has a 4 gig memory chip installed. Also, if I hover over my SATA ports, we'll get information on what is connected to that individual SATA port. You can see that I have two SATA devices attached. One of these is my device here, and the other one is Blu-ray disc DVD ROM drive. This is a great UFI tool to visually see how the motherboard is arranged and what is connected to your machine without even opening the case. So if you have time to take, get into your BIOS and view your settings and learn 